Good morning. It is good to be here with you and to participate in this 2012 Big Ten Recreational Sports Conference. As you know, my name is Jim Rennick. I work at MSU, where I also earn two Bachelor of Science degrees and my Master of Science in Exercise Physiology. I will always be grateful to Dr. Larry Sierra, Director Emeritus of Michigan State University's Recreational Sports and Fitness Services, my boss and mentor, for believing in my abilities and for providing me with an accessible working environment that has enabled me to be successful in my job. I am also grateful to Dr. Rick McNeil, the current director, who has continued the philosophy and values of Dr. Sierra. This will be a short talk, but please let me tell you a little bit about my life. July 1st, 1953, was a bad day. Dad was on a ship going to fight in a war. Mom Barb went into a coma, and lost her life, and I became disabled with CP. A small ship went out and picked up my dad. He did not have to fight in that war. In 1956, Mom Noreen came into my life, just in time to get me ready for school. This was hard work for mom. My first so-called school was in the wing of a hospital in Detroit. This was therapy only, PT, OT and speech, without any academics, which was not fun. When I outgrew this place, I ended up at a lab school at Eastern Michigan University. The first thing they did was size me up for some leg braces, in hopes they could teach me to walk. This did not work. A year passed, and I only could take seven steps. Another problem was, I was growing out of my braces fast. My dad did not have the money to replace my braces every three months. I hated my braces anyway, and therefore every afternoon when I came home from school, mom took my braces off and set me free. The east end of the Rackham School was our small dormitory, and when I looked out my window, I could see the big dome that the telescope was housed in. When I got up next to the telescope, I looked into the eyepiece, and I could not see anything, because my body was not stable. However, I loved seeing the big telescope. That telescope was a piece of assistive technology. With it, people could go beyond the limits of the human eye. All my life, I have wanted to go beyond my physical limits and I have been fortunate to be able to help develop assistive technology for myself and for others. I loved working with university students at Eastern when I was young. And who would have guessed, I would be working with students at Michigan State University, today. I met Dr. John Muhlenberg in 1975. It was my first year at MSU. I was taking a required course in American Thought and Language for undergraduate students called Communication 101. I came to class with my plastic word board. 
the professor, Dr. Apple, did not want to take the time to communicate with me. My communication method was too slow for him. So he told me to drop his course. Dr. Apple said that he did not have any training in special education. So he shouldn't be required to have a student like me. He simply refused to have me in his class. I dropped Dr. Apple's communication course and I took it two years later with another professor. In the meantime, I started working with Dr. Ewenberg and, together, we tried to identify what I could, and could not, do. And to try to match my needs, to the technology that was emerging at that time. When I took that communication course, the second time, I was able to give a speech in class, using a talking computer. It was the first time in history that anyone had given a speech using a voice synthesizer. At that time, the maximum capacity of any commercial communication device was just two sentences. But we had figured out a way to expand the memory capability. I was making history. But, for me, it was mainly a matter of getting tools to do my schoolwork and get my bachelor's degree. I did earn that degree. In fact, I earned two bachelor's degrees. One in food science, and the second in human nutrition. I was determined to go for a graduate degree, so I went on to study exercise physiology, and I did earn my master's degree in that subject. My original goal was to get a medical degree, and I took a lot of courses, that would prepare me for a career in medical science. In 1982, our local member of Congress from Lansing heard about my achievements and asked me to give testimony at a congressional hearing about assistive technology. It was the first time that anyone had given testimony using a voice output communication system. I like to think that my words that day helped to pave the way for the ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act, which was signed into law in 1990. A week after I gave testimony in that congressional hearing, I got to meet George H.W. Bush and to give the benediction at a luncheon where he spoke. Now, I'd like to go back and tell you why I love Michigan State University. It all started when I was a little boy. I was seven years old and got to go to school on a university campus and the seed was planted. EMU is a great university. However, they did not have the student services I needed. I transferred to MSU because they offered all the services I needed. And was close to Sandy, my high school sweetheart. I have always tried to keep fit. I love athletics. And I even won quite a few gold medals in international competitions. As I grew older, I knew I needed to take good care of my body. I took what I had learned as a graduate student in exercise physiology and I designed a weightlifting program for myself. I had my friends help me work out. When I received my Master of Science degree, my students helped me work out. That went on for years until one day I was ordered by the risk management folks 
at MSU to stop my workouts. They said I could only do exercises while sitting in my wheelchair. No, I am angry because I can feel myself fading away. I heard of a professor at the U of M who agrees with me that some people who have CP should follow a weight training program. I look forward to collaborating with him in the coming months. When I was seven, my teachers and therapists told my parents that they should think about institutionalizing me. And they did think about it. And I did, too. And, yes, I was institutionalized. You see, I am at MSU. MSU is an institution. An institution of higher learning. I am still learning. And I hope you are, too. Let's take what we have learned in the past 35 years and make a better world. For all. Thank you.